the return of the very popular Eltham flyweight Mickey Cantwell in the blue trunks back after a 16 month gap out of the ring he's up against Dave Caldwell who he's fought before Caldwell in the white and he's from Sheffield Cantwell looking to use this as a warm-up to hopefully getting a third shot at the world crown and at 35 he hasn't got a lot of time left needs to look good here against Caldwell Yes, I think this is a very important fight for Campbell. He needs uh, to do well in this fight. Been out of the ring for a long time, so there could be a lot of ring rust, but really just can't afford to hang about. When they fought before, a couple of years ago, Caldwell did well. He uh, made it difficult for Campbell that night. He has an elusive style from the Brendan Ingle camp. Winkerbank Sheffield not a great record Colwell 14 fights only four victories but uh, he's better than that well, that's some good punches from Canwell he's just using the the wide arcing overhand punches and they're just catching Colwell because he has his chin in the air that bit good right and left from Canwell early success Standing toe-to-toe, uh, -to -toe, quite surprisingly. Canwell not trying with the jab. He's found a little weakness, and that's that Colwell carries his chin quite high. And he's just coming in with his head down, looking for hooks. Yes, fighting at very close quarters already. Different to the first time they met. And uh, Cantwell won, and won quite convincingly. But uh, he's looking better tonight. But a head goes in from Cantwell, and the uh, referee warns him immediately. Once more, he does that, and he's out. A headbutt from Cantwell, blatant. Well, that's a little unusual for Cantwell. Normally a very good sportsman, just maybe a little keyed up, knows the importance of this fight. knows he cannot afford to slip up. Caught by an uppercut there from Colwell. And again, on the inside, Colwell having some success. That's a nice little flurry inside from Colwell, but it's just the pressure from Canwell that's given him a few problems at this point. First round to Mickey Canwell, despite that headbutt, and uh, that's unusual from Cantwell. Well, it was a, a good start from Cantwell, good overhand right there. Looking for the, the left to follow it. How about this headbutt, though? Well, that really is um, not like Mickey Cantwell, very good sportsman, but I think frustration coming into him there. And that was a, a blatant butt. The referee was straight on to him to give him a warning, and that was uh, rightly so. That was quite out of character. Third round, Mickey Cantwell in the blue shorts. Twice a world title challenger, former British flyweight champion. David Caldwell in the white with the ice across his waistband. Dave Ice Caldwell, he calls himself. Many people mistook him for Naz earlier on in his career. Hasn't had that success. Only winning four out of 14. This is better now from Caldwell. Just trying to speed up, use his reflexes, and he's caught Canwell quite a few times at the beginning of this round. And Canwell's face looking rather reddened. Only six rounds this time. His eight last. Good right hand from Canwell on the ropes. And, uh, The more Caldwell comes forward, the more he seems to be caught on the counter like that. He just can't seem to get out of the way of Cantwell's fast hand speed. Even at 35, he's still quick. 
one of Colwell's problems is because he's not looking to move, he's looking to stand and trade with Cantwell, and that just allows Cantwell the chance to get the momentum going with those hoops. Brendan Ingle telling Colwell to roll from Cantwell's shots to move more. As Glenn said, his head is static, and uh, that's not the style that suits the uh, Winkerbank fighters. Ryan Rhodes at ringside, shouting encouragement to Colwell. Dane Catwell gets in with the cleaner work. But Colwell does better when he stays at range, uses his reflexes, but when he gets in close and allows Cantwell to get those hooks on, that's where Cantwell looks better. He's had success with the left hooks. Mickey Cantwell. Brilliant amateur, Cantwell. You can see his skills. Quite evident tonight. Colwell smiles. Refuses to acknowledge that he's being hurt by these shots. But Mickey Cantwell is uh, really giving him a bit of a boxing lesson at the moment. Two good shots there from Cantwell. He was using lots of jabs and then change it to the hooks and really just showing the, the bad defense of Caldwell. It's every time again, Caldwell tries something and gets close. Caldwell picks him off. Picks up the round again, Nicky Cantwell. Fifth round of six at flyweight. Mickey Cantwell using this really as a warm-up to hopefully a third world title shot. And it's turning into a uh, fairly decent night for him and not for young David Colwell, the 23-year-old from Sheffield. 12 years, the age gap between these two fighters. Mickey Cantwell turned a professional late because of a tremendous amateur career. 35 is quite old for a flyweight. Colwell at 23 has had 14 fights. Campbell at 35 has had 19. So good stiff punches there from Cantwell, really trying to plant his feet and get some power in these shots. Doesn't seem like a lot of ring rust after uh, 16 months out of the ring. Ricky Campbell. Well, I think that's down to his intensity. I think he's really just. You know, so focused for this fight, he's not trying to box his way in, he went straight into the attack. And I think that's what's worked so well for him. A bit more movement now from Caldwell. Trying to give Catwell some uh, more difficult angles. And that's a good right hand from Caldwell. Just shakes Cantwell for a minute. That's better. He's being urged in by the Sheffield corner. But Cantwell straight back, great shots, very clean work and gets a round of applause from his corner, Jimmy Tibbs on his feet. Well he just stood around too long and let Colwell tee off and now he's showing how much he wants the, the win here, firing back Mickey Cantwell, showing good character under a little bit of pressure. Now Cantwell being urged in by his corner, catches Colwell again with a jab, left to the body. Bad moments for Davy Caldwell. Well, Cantwell just not giving Caldwell a second. Caldwell has some success. Cantwell comes firing back. Heads coming close together again, and a little blood from the nose of Mickey Cantwell. Had problems with cuts, but uh, nothing major tonight. Although they are fighting at very close quarters at time, and again, Colwell looks dazed when Catwell gets through with his shots. And there's just a glance to the corner there from Colwell, as if to say, "Why? Well, what am I to do?" He just and doesn't I... look like he's happy here tonight, Glenn, at all. Well, I think that, I think really, I just think that's down to the the tremendous pressure that Candle's applying. 
Cantwell winning this by a shutout, we think. And uh, David Colwell sits down in his corner, more tired now. He is the central area champion. And, uh, very nice guy out of the ring, but in the ring. There's that good right hand from Caldwell at the beginning of the round. Really did land a good one. Cantwell just standing around too long. Just but look at the way he came back. I think that's really down to his character. And look at the amount of punches landed from Cantwell. 142 to just 64 from Caldwell. Really good success rate. Yes, that tells the story, that stats, actually. It really does. Mickey uh, Cantwell has uh, been very impressive tonight. Final round, and barring no disasters, it should be an easy win for Mickey Cantwell, the Eltham flyweight, who at 35 is hoping for one more chance of a world title. Few would begrudge him. Well, that's how I've got it, Adam. Everything so far to Cantwell, just great pressure. You can really see how motivated, how much this fight means to him. It may just be a six-rounder, but this really is Mickey Cantwell's future on the line. And Davy Caldwell, who has done well to stand up at least to uh, Cantwell's fire tonight, I know was really, really up for this fight. He's been training months for this. He's wanted Cantwell ever since the first time they met two years ago, but he just cannot fathom Cantwell's style and classier workout. He's tried to stand in front of him, which was a mistake. And uh, Colwell surely now needs a knockout to win this. And he'll be very disappointed having had that terrific performance in Spain against uh, Jose Antonio Lopez. Cantwell coming forward again, enjoying it now. We're going off that excellent result from Caldwell in Spain. This really does look good now for Mickey Cantwell. It's a, a good performance because really he hasn't allowed Caldwell into this fight at all. Caldwell pushes him back out of frustration more than anything. And, uh, a lot of the Ingle camper down here to support him, Caldwell. And, just hasn't been his nice, I'm afraid. Well, when Colwell does try to wind up Candle with that good boxing brain, that excellent amateur pedigree goes back to that amateur style, uses that jab so well. Nicky Cantwell boxing really nicely, even at this late stage of his career. And uh, the crowd are cheering him on. Had the easiest of careers, Mickey Cantwell. And, uh, dedicated to his family. And, uh, really would be lovely if he could bring a world title back to England. Just has to get through this. And hopefully, Frank Warren will sort him out that chance. Even finishing strongly. Well, it really is. Uh, you know, he's 35, but a uh, credit to his fitness and how hard he's worked for this by Cantwell has never let up throughout and really Caldwell just hasn't had a chance to get any sort of style or any sort of boxing together. Uh, at the bow and Caldwell gives him a little tap, he knows Catwell's a big winner and uh, that was impressive from the Eltham flyweight Mickey Cantwell, can he win a world title at the third attempt? Hopefully he'll get the chance. There's a lot of respect between the two fighters. Look at that success rate. Cantwell won it.